You're fast asleep when the airway closes, the lungs are starved of oxygen, the body panics and the system goes into overdrive to effectively jumpstart you back to life. It's a hell of a way to wake up and with the heart pumping maniacally from the ordeal, how the hell do you get back to sleep? It's been described as Australia's hidden epidemic and doctors Harry Ball and Vikas Wardwa join us to discuss sleep apnea. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, gentlemen. Good, Good morning. morning. How, how common is this in mm. Australia? Well, snoring itself is very common and snoring is a part of sleep apnea. Um, it's estimated that at least 40% or more of adults snore frequently and quite a number of these will have underlying sleep apnea where what happens is that the airway closes up and the oxygen levels can fall during the night. It's quite a serious problem but one that is eminently quite treatable. So just because you're a snorer doesn't mean that you're going to get sleep, suffer from sleep apnea though, does it? No, it doesn't but a significant number of snorers do suffer from the condition and it's only by testing uh, that we, one can realise whether they do have underlying sleep apnea. So the, sleep, the, the person that suffers from sleep apnea is not going to necessarily know that he or she does? No, that's right. And, and mm. a lot of people think snoring is just a laughing matter, but actually snoring is a sign of obstruction. So if someone snores, I mean, apart from being a major problem for the partners, yeah. it, it, it could be sleep apnea. What about people who say, but I only snore when I have a few beers? Yeah, they're probably, I mean, a lot of people are in that category, but it's more the type of person that's snoring chronically most of the time. So it might not be all night long, but it's a chronic problem, not related just to late nights and beers and that sort of thing. All right, well, I, I think, you know, many of us know someone who has sleep apnea, and we've all heard about this, you know, rather sort of elaborate contraption, mm -hmm. the, the CPAP that they need to wear to breathe, to, to, to push the air through their, through their throat. Is that the only treatment? Because I know that tends to put a lot of people mm. off, doesn't it? Sure. The uh, CPAP, which is known as continuous positive air pressure, as you describe, it's a machine that pushes air gently through the upper airway to keep it open. That's been one of the most effective ways of treatment. And in fact, treatment on that front has actually come a long way. The machine's much quieter and smaller, much better tolerated. In fact, the masks themselves have become much better. But that's one way of treatment. The other way is, of course, dental appliance treatment, which means a device that fits into the uh, upper and lower jaw and pushes the lower jaw forward to support the airway. That's uh, been a very effective treatment for sleep apnea. Yeah, so that's your, that, that's that's your area, area of expertise, that, yeah, isn't that's it? Right, yes. So, so, so why, why might this be more suitable for people than perhaps a CPAP? Well, it, it, for most people it's a lot more comfortable and less obtrusive, so we find that with the dental devices 98% of people can tolerate them very easily and over the last couple of years the research has shown that with, with sleep apnea if you've got mild to moderate sleep apnea the dental devices are, are very effective they're, they're kind of equal with CPAP so CPAP these days is for the severe group that have got significant sure. sleep apnea. Will it always progress? If you've got sleep apnea, can it just stay at a, at a point wow, where little, you can have, yeah. you know, perhaps the, the dental device, or will it always eventually end up with a CPAP? Well, I think that, I mean, sleep apnea often progresses because as we get a little bit older, you lose more muscle tone around the throat. If you put in a little bit of weight, that worsens the sleep apnea. Drink a few more beverages in the yes, evening. Yes, exactly. So the aim is, say, with a dental device, if you've got people when, they're, when it's still in the mild to moderate stage, they've got an opportunity then to lose weight, exercise and stop it getting more severe. So you, you can't cure it? Once, you, once you've developed sleep apnea, you can't cure it? You can't get rid well, of it again? Certainly if people are particularly overweight, for example, and they lose a substantial amount of weight, that can in some people be almost curative. They may not have residual sleep apnea, but they are predisposed to it. So as time progresses, and as Dr Ball mentioned, with, with increasing age as well, they may redevelop symptoms. So certainly follow-up is important. But apart from these two treatment modalities, of course, weight, as you mentioned about alcohol, tobacco, just lifestyle measurements that can actually make sleep apnea much better. You, you mentioned losing weight there. Is it, is it the, just the losing weight or is it the, the fitness, the strength of the muscles that goes with being lighter? Well, generally it is, it is weight reduction and weight reduction from uh, from the body can actually happen, particularly also around the neck, mm. which mm. is one of the most uh, important areas where pressure on the airway does contribute to sleep apnea. Mm. So, What kind of risk does undiagnosed sleep apnea pose? Mm. Well, we've become increasingly aware of the problem and its health-related association. So not only does it affect the person symptomatically in terms of how they feel the next day or what kind of a night's sleep they had. In fact, their partner's night's sleep as well. And so the relationship's there. 
but also health-wise, blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, and the risk of accidents on the road and at mm. work is significantly increased with sleep apnea. But treatment itself, effective treatments that are available, can actually reduce that risk and make people significantly better in terms of symptoms. All right, well, what's the way of the future going to be in terms of treatment, do you think? Well, devices are actually always coming around, which are much better tolerated, smaller, more compact, and very effective. So we're already at that stage now. But in terms of diagnosis, we've actually had people who have had to go into laboratories and hospitals for complicated overnight studies. Mm. Now they can actually have excellent studies done at home in their own bed overnight. So the future is really to have more expeditious diagnosis mm -hmm. and very effective treatments. Okay. Yes, that's right, because uh, probably 85% of the people in Australia that have got sleep apnea actually don't know they've got it. Mm -hmm. So they might be a little bit sleepy and tired, they think it's just they're getting a little bit older, they mm. snore, they think that's a separate problem. And these people are driving around, they're tired, they're operating machinery at work. So uh, as Dr. Wadwell was saying, that the little breakthrough in diagnosis now where you can have a comfortable test done at home is a big step forward in, yeah. in diagnosing people. And there is a genetic link. A very strong genetic link. In, in our clinic we see a, 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 probably one segment of people are not overweight, they're younger and very strong family history. And you look down there, down in their airway and you can see long soft palate, mm. a large base of tongue, very much to do with hereditary. But then when they get a bit older and put on weight, then other factors come in yeah. just to make it more... Yeah. But it's also important to know that it's not just a disease of, or a condition of just older men. Mm. Females can get it, and even children. And in children, the problem often is because of enlarged adenoids. tonsils and adenoids, yeah. Yeah. and which can be surgically treated. All right. Good to talk to you both. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. And if you'd like some more information on sleep apnea or anything else on today's show, jump onto the website. Here's Marianne.